Aha. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I did remember to turn up. Um, I'm going to uh, obviously explain what it takes to become uh, a world memory champion. Um, I'm going to give a couple of demonstrations. And I shall illustrate this by getting you to perform a feat of memory yourselves. And then we'll have some uh, uh, questions and answers at the end. Um, one of the questions that Dr. David asked me was, um, was I born with a good memory? And the answer is no. In fact, when I was a baby, I had a knock to the head. And um, I think this may have been a trigger for my uh, dyslexia. We didn't know much about dyslexia in the uh, 1960s or 50s. But certainly, I had a problem reading and writing. I was quite slow. It took me four attempts to pass English language. And I had a problem concentrating on what the teacher was saying. I was more interested in the, the movement of the face, or I was easily distracted. So I think I had a bit of attention deficit disorder as well. In fact, I have my old school reports here. Uh, interesting reading. Uh, this is calculation. Cannot keep the question in his head. Uh, another one, geography appears to know more the universe than the Earth. Uh, unless Dominic really shakes himself, he's never going to achieve any success. He tends to dream in the middle of a calculation which leads him to lose track of the thought. Bit of attention problems there. Dominic daydreams a lot and pays too little attention to detail. Terribly slow, often cannot repeat the question. History, this is a good one, absent. Uh, I, th I think they meant absent-minded. So you wouldn't have thought, looking at those school reports, that one day this boy would go on to become oh, a memory man, let alone eight times world memory champion. So what happened? Um, it wasn't until, nine, uh, well, it was 1987, when I was 12, where the mathematicians... And in fact, I was 30, that I saw this amazing guy called Creighton Carvello. Remember Record Breakers with Roy Castle? He was attempting to memorise a deck of cards, which he did in three minutes. In fact, 2 minutes 59 seconds. And it's the way the cards were dealt out. They were dealt out one at a time like this. And Creighton was able to memorise the exact sequence. And when I saw that, I was fascinated because I, I ruled out the possibility of a photographic memory because the cards weren't splayed out in a row of 52, so he wasn't photographically memorising them. He must have had some technique to get the sequence of the information. Either that or he was born with a very special brain. And interestingly enough, uh, this is a question that the Institute of Neurology asked of me and nine other top memorizers uh, a few years ago. Uh, they wanted to know, do we have very special brains? Are we intellectually superior over and above our memory? Or are we using special techniques? So they did functional magnetic resonance imaging. So they looked at my brain layer by layer. They didn't find any silicon chips in there or any aids for cheating. They said it's a normal brain. Second question is, uh, is this guy a genius? They said no. I said, there must be some mistake, surely. <laughs> they said, no, you're quite normal, but you have a trained memory. So the third question is, are we specialising? Are we using parts of our brains that the control group, in fact, they were students, are not using? And they found there were areas, uh, and in fact, I'll read out what they've said. We found that superior, superior memory was not driven by exceptional intellectual ability or structural brain differences. Rather, we found that superior memorizers used a spatial learning strategy engaging brain regions such as the hippocampus that are critical for memory and for spatial memory in particular. Okay. What I did uh, when I first saw Crate and memorize the cards was... I thought, well, maybe he's using some sort of story. I heard about us using a story method to connect one card to the next. And with my lively imagination, something I was using at school but not to study anything, uh, I started to turn the cards into pictures, into people, in fact. And very quickly, I was able to memorise a half a deck of cards. I made a few mistakes. <coughs> then I found I was getting faster and faster. My concentration was increasing. And then in 1991, I was invited to enter the first World Memory Championships. Uh, and there were only seven of us at the time. And fortunately, I was able to win it. Uh, in fact, if anybody's interested in, in uh, entering the World Memory Championships, I've got some of the test papers here. Uh, it really is a growing sport. It's a mind sport. And we have, uh, believe it or not, national champions from around the world, for, from China, America, Turkey, Australia, South Africa. And... It's a three-day competition, and there are ten events. 
The first one, you presented one number, not too difficult, you might think, but this particular number is uh, 2,000 digits long. This is the first page. <laughs> this is 1,000 numbers. They're presented in rows of 40 digits by 25 rows. And the idea is you, you're supposed to read through it like a book, and you have one hour to do this. And at the end of it, you've got an hour and a half to reproduce the number. Uh, the most I've done is 1,820 after errors. You then have half an hour to memorize binary numbers, 4,000 binary numbers. You have shorter sprint records, or, uh, events. You have 15 minutes to memorize 100 names and faces you've never seen before. 300 words in 15 minutes that have no connection. Um, at this point, I'd like a volunteer. Somebody to do... Yes. What's your name? Daisy. Daisy. A round of applause for Daisy, please. Um, we haven't met before, Daisy, have we? No. Nope. How's Auntie Lucy? No, never mind. Um, what I'd like you to do is I've got a grid here of 50 squares. I'd like you to produce a single digit for each square, and I'm going to try and memorise it. Okay. So you start from there, go left to right. One of the events at the World Memory Championships which is probably the, the most difficult is um, they put in a CD with 100 numbers. Uh, and in 1993, when this was first introduced, it was 100 numbers called out at the rate of one digit every two seconds. And at the time, the uh, psychologists were saying, well, that you can't memorize more than about 15, 20 digits. In fact, the short-term memory span is about seven to nine units. And I was able to disprove that. I memorized the 100 digits in one hit. So then they made it more difficult. They did it one every second. And the current record is 196 digits. This is held by the current champion, a guy called Clemens Mayer. So what they do is they put in the CD, and if you happen to memorize the 100 digits, then they put in another 150, and then 200, and so on. So what Daisy is doing now, preferably sometime today, will be finished, Daisy, in your own time. <laughs> Daisy, if, if you would like to, could you read out the number when you're finished? <laughs> and uh, I'm going to attempt to memorize this, and you can try this as well. See how many you can do. So it requires... Three things, really. Uh, the use of um, imagination, which is something that you've all got. Um, brainwave control, concentration, and places. I use a journey. Okay, Daisy, I'm going to start off very slowly and we'll, we'll build up a bit of speed. So when I tap the, uh, the flip chart, if you just give me the first number. So here we go. Seven. Three. Zero, nine, four, six, Two, three, nine, zero, one, seven. You've had that sequence before. Nine, zero, one, seven. Okay. Um. Eight, three. And that one. Trying to make it easy for me, aren't you? Seven, nine, four, six, two, Three, 
six. Okay. Just let those numbers filter if you'd like to take the pen. The last two digits were five six, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any, anyone want to have a go at this? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to call out the numbers um, from the beginning. Hopefully. So it starts with a seven, is that right, Daisy? Yeah. Then a three. Mm-hmm. One. Oh, uh, sorry. Four. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. One. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Eight. Three. Yeah. Five. Two. Yeah. Is that right? Zero. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Is it a four? Yeah. Six. Yeah. Three, nine. Yeah. Is it a one? Yeah. Three. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. One. Yeah. If you'd like to put a line after that one now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and go from the end back to that number. <laughs> so we'll start with the last digit, which was a six. Is that right? Yeah. Five. Yeah. Then it's an eight. Yeah. Three. Yeah. <coughs> seven. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Is it a nine? Yeah. Seven? Yeah. Zero? Yeah. Six? Yeah. Seven? Three? Yeah. Two? Six? Yeah. That's another nine? Yeah. Seven? Yeah. Three? Eight? Yeah. Then that sequence that you like so much. Seven? Yeah. One? Zero? Nine? Yeah. Then is it a three? Yeah. Two? Yeah. Four? Yeah. Six? Yeah. Then eight? Seven? Yeah. Then we're back at the uh, middle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about that is... I will have that number in my head for as long as I like. So if you ask me at the end of the lecture, and I'll be able to go through the number backwards and forwards tomorrow morning, next week. Probably after about a month, it'll begin to fade. There's a rule of five. If you review it once, and then the next day, then the next week, the next month, and three months later, it really goes into your long-term memory. What I'm effectively doing now is I seem to be bypassing my short-term memory. I'm putting it straight into my long-term memory. And I'm doing that by using those ingredients, using location, association, imagination. Uh, but I'm also able to get into the right state of mind where I can see these pictures very clearly. Um, let me just give you an example of this. Um, imagine going back to your old school and looking at the front gates, and they've gone digital. So there's a, there's a time on there which says quarter past two. So it says 14.15. So just imagine that, a clock outside, 14.15. And as you go down the school drive, you see a balloon and string, which looks like the number nine, the number shape for nine. And it's attached to a swan, which looks like the number two. Two looks like a swan. I don't know whether you have an old school chapel, but just imagine going to the chapel and there's a wedding ceremony and there's a 65-year-old man marrying a 35-year-old woman. Lucky man. 65-year-old man marrying a 35-year-old woman. Now... Just go back through the story and tell me what the number is. 1415. So it's 1415. 9, 2, 65, 35. Very easy. Does anybody know what that number is? What, what I've done is I, I've tricked you into memorizing the first 10 decimal places to buy 3.14159265535. And you did that very quickly. How long will you have that number in your head for? You could show off like I did and go backwards, couldn't you? Five, three, <laughs> five, six, two, nine. It's a bit of a strain, but it's possible, isn't it? So now you're beginning to see how it's possible to do a 50-digit number. So in fact, what I'm doing is I'm turning pairs of numbers into people. So I have a code. I call it the language of numbers. So if we take uh, the number 7243... I split that into two pairs. So 72 is George Bush. Why is 72 George Bush? How many mistakes he's made? How many mistakes he's made? That's a, that's a good one. All right. The seventh letter of the alphabet is G, and the second is B. So this is, a, this is the system that I have. And 43 becomes David Copperfield. So now I have a picture of George Bush pulling a rabbit out of a hat, which is what he needs to do to stay in power. Um, if it was the other way around, if it was 4372, what would that be? David Copperfield doing what George Bush likes to do, wave the US flag. So now you can see that to do a 50-digit number, I have what I call a journey. It's an old Greek method called loci. So I only need about 13 places to slot four-digit sequences. And I'm just picking up the images that I created. 
Let me take the, the deck of cards. <coughs> so if you um, just go on a journey of your own in your head, uh, just prepare five stages. And the best way to do this is to close your eyes, because when you close your eyes, it's telling your brain you want to go to sleep. And then you start producing these wonderful frequencies called alpha and theta waves, and it helps you to picture things. So I want you all to close your eyes. So go on a journey of five stages. So you start with your bedroom. Then you could go to the bathroom, whatever the second stage is, spare room, maybe the staircase, covered under the stairs, just five places. But put them in a logical sequence and don't go back to the bedroom. You just keep moving forward. Everybody got five places yet? <coughs> OK, let's have a look at... That's the first step. So you can open your eyes now. The second step is to learn the language. So I've got five playing cards here. The King of Diamonds to me, is Bill Gates, the wealthiest man in the world. The King of Spades, that's, that could be Alan Titchmarsh, couldn't it? The gardener, King of Garden Spades. Next one, we've got Nine of Clubs. How about Nick Faldo? He plays golf, golf clubs. Nine sounds like Nick. Association. Queen of Clubs, that could be uh, Kylie Minogue, the Queen of Nightclubs. And then finally, James Bond, Heartthrob, Seven of Hearts. 007. So a quick review of that. Alan Titchmarsh? Yeah. Who's that? Yeah. Nick Faldo? Kylie, Kylie Minogue. Yeah. Very good. James, James Bond. Yeah. Bill Gates. Right, now I'm going to shuffle them up. Return to your journey. Make sure you've got the five places. Okay, now just look at the cards as I turn them over in any sequence that I want. So you're in your bedroom. And you're going to meet, open your eyes, please, Kylie Minogue. <coughs> you got your thumbs up there, so yes. <laughs> so now, just imagine interacting with these objects as I give you, give you them. So you see, Kylie Minogue, use left brain logic. Why is Kylie Minogue in your bedroom? But you decide in the privacy of your own mind. That's the first card. Go to the second stage of your journey. James Bond. Where is James Bond? Is he in the bathroom, the spare room? You decide. Why is he there? What's he doing there? <laughs> Just picture that. Next one, go to the next stage of your journey and you meet Bill Gates. He's counting his money or his diamonds. Why is he doing it in that particular room in the house? It's very important to use the logic, the reason. The next stage of the journey you meet Nick Fowder. He's practicing his golf for the open, swinging his golf. Maybe he's breaking the chandelier or whatever furniture you've got. Okay, see that going on. And finally, you see Alan Titchmarsh. He's making a real mess in the living room, digging up <laughs> the carpet and everything else. OK? Now all you have to do is review that information. So what happened in the bedroom? Colin. Kylie Minogue, the Queen of Clubs. First card. Second stage? James. Seven of Hearts. Next one? Bill Gates, which is the King of Diamonds. Next one? Nick Fowler, which is nine, nine of clubs. clubs. And finally, Alex. King of Space. So I'll see you all at the next World Memory Championships. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite simple, isn't it? OK, that was just five cards. <coughs> uh, what I found when I started training my brain this way, that my concentration started to increase. And I was able to turn it on and get faster and faster. And in fact, when I do compete, my standard goes up. Unfortunately for me, so do the uh, other competitors. Their standard goes up as well. Um, but in 2002, I got a new world record, which was for the memori memorization of 54 decks of playing cards. So the Guinness rules state that the 54 decks must be shuffled into each other and then dealt out one at a time only, a single sighting of each card. And this took me 12 hours to do it. So I dealt them out very slowly. And then I had to review each deck in my head until I did the 54 decks. And it took me another three hours to regurgitate it. So that is the current record, 54 decks. At some point, I'm going to try and do 100 decks. Now, you, at this point, you're thinking, what a sad man. Um, <laughs> he spends all his time memorizing cards and numbers. Well, I, I don't, actually. I'm more interested in what's going on in the brain. But I believe that this reveals the learning process. So it's very useful for students, and particularly ones that were struggling at school, like me. But also, I think it's a great exercise for the brain. 
And we were talking about Alzheimer's earlier. And uh, even though you might have the physical appearance of Alzheimer's when you're over 75, 85, I believe you, that you can uh, keep that at bay just by exercising your brain, by doing games like Sudoku, uh, jigsaw puzzles, crosswords, but playing memory games like this. What about bridge? Yeah. Yes, that's, that's very good, but it's, it's not really straining your brain. Uh, you need to do this for about a 10-minute stretch. I'm going to do some uh, questions and answers in a second, but I'm going to... Sorry. I'd like a, a volunteer to shuffle the deck. Tom, you must be a card player. If you'd like to shuffle the deck. I'm going to try and beat Creighton's record of 2 minutes 59 seconds with one error. So maybe someone would like to time me on this. So Tom's shuffling the deck, and I'm going to deal them out one at a time. OK, let's okay, stand aside. Now, can we see this on the screen? Yes, we can on that screen. OK. So we'll do a rough time on this, so if someone would like to look at their watch, and I'll, I'll start. And you can try and memorise this as well. <laughs> Okay. Anybody got a time on that? 223. Sorry? 223. 223. Okay, I'm going to let those cards fill through. All right. Um, I'll turn my... I'll, I'll move over here. So if you'd like to deal the cards, I'll, I'll name them out one at a time. Okay, uh, the first card is the two of spades. Mm -hmm. Uh... Then the Jack of Clubs, the Queen of Hearts. Um, is it the Jack of Spades? Uh, Ten of Hearts, King of Spades, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, eight of Hearts, Six of Clubs, the Nine of Hearts, Ace of Diamonds, the Four of Hearts, Five of Hearts, uh, Six of Diamonds, the Ace of Clubs, I think it is. Like yeah, the Queen of Spades, <laughs> then the Ace of Spades. Uh, King of Diamonds, Two of Clubs, the Seven of Spades, Seven of Diamonds, uh, King of Hearts, Four of Diamonds, the Seven of Hearts, is it the Four of Clubs? Ten of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, Three of Diamonds, then the Five of Clubs, then the Ace of Hearts, Eight of Diamonds, another eight, the Eight of Clubs, 
And then another eight, uh, eight of spades, is that right? Yeah. Two of hearts. Jack of diamonds. Uh, we've got the queen of clubs, ten of clubs. Uh, then the nine of diamonds, five of spades, is that right? Mm -hmm. Then the uh, six of spades, six of hearts. Uh, two spades coming up, the three of spades. Uh, sorry, the four of spades. No, it's not the four of spades. It's, it's the four of spades, three of spades. Have I got the right way around? Yes. Yeah. Uh, three of clubs. Uh, then the jack of hearts. Uh, the seven of clubs, ten of spades. Nine of clubs, two of diamonds. The Is it the five of uh, diamonds, three of hearts, and then the king of clubs, and nine of spades? <laughs> and the good thing about that is... Uh, I, can, I now know the, the sequence inside out, so if we look at any card, the four of clubs, I know the seven of hearts is behind it, and then the ten of diamonds should be after it. A good trick, that. Um, <laughs> somebody said, as, as you can memorise so many cards, why don't you start playing the casino? So I, I did, I took six months out, studied the game of blackjack, and started to clean up. And now I'm barred from every single casino in the UK. <laughs> All right. Um, has anybody got any questions? I think we're running a bit short of time. Yeah. Yes. Um, I noticed somebody came in the room when you were concentrating. Yes. Um, does the environment that you're doing it in, because I find it's very bright, very warm, yeah. not very comfortable for me, and I'm not really, you know, picking up yeah. as quickly as I'd like to, but is the environment... Am I easily distracted? Yes. Um, well, that's why I've got my eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't well, I mean, you know, trips over there, you obviously yes. sense that, but um, yeah. you're obviously in touch with things around you. But yeah, what I'm doing is I'm going into my own little world, so I'm going on a journey. Mm. So that's the, forf uh, the forefront of my so mind. So you can block out noise? I can block out that to a certain <coughs> extent, yes. Yeah. Uh, now again, that comes with practice. I've been doing this for many years, and I've been doing under pressure, doing, doing it on television, and uh, yeah. also at the World Memory Championships. And uh, so you learn to do that. You get con conditioned into getting in the zone, if you like. Any other questions? Does each card have a, a, a relate to a person? Yes, it does. And so you're telling yourself a story? Yes. In fact, um, I, as with the numbers, I was looking at two cards at a time. You probably saw I was building up a sort of rhythm. I was doing okay. two. So it would be a person followed by an action. But a bit like George Bush pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Are combinations of two different numbers? Yes. Uh, well, there's 52 by 52 combinations, <laughs> which is 2,000 something, so 2,700. Each one of those has a, a person attached. So the yeah, it's subject, uh, verb, or person, action. So the first combination was the two of spades, which is an old friend of mine called Paul. He's in my bedroom. That's where we started, and he's uh, skiing, jack of clubs. So I take the action of another person. So they're like interchangeable pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, a big mental jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> But as I said uh, earlier, it, it's important to use the left brain as well, to use some logic. Now, why is he skiing in my bedroom? He's making a mess of the carpet, you know. So you're using both sides of the brain, you're using imagination and logic. Any other questions? Yeah. When, when you were demonstrating this, you sort of said, let that filter through, you know, you gave yourself a few seconds. Yes. What were you actually you know, doing with that? I was just what, being dramatic. I was going to... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty, much, it's pretty much instantaneous, you know. It's either there or it's not. Yeah, a bit of showman, yeah. <laughs> I was just preparing myself, you know, making sure I got the first. I do a quick scan in my head just to make sure they're all there. So. Do you want to use the same characters? The characters are, are pretty much the same now. Um, in the early days, I used to change them because some of them didn't work so well. They weren't clear. I was always making the same mistake, eight of hearts or something. But the characters are very strong people. They can be a mixture of uh, friends, relatives, famous people infamous people from the past. So they stay the same for each deck of cards? They're the same, but obviously where I meet them along the journey, that alters. So the journey is always the same, but the characters are, are in different places. How long did it take you before you memorised the first pack of cards? Uh, I think uh, it took me probably three or four weeks to do a full deck. Um, and then I made about 26 errors. But I got to the end of a deck and I, was, I thought, this, is, this could be good. Maybe I could threaten Creighton's record. Any other questions? One more? Um, none of it, well, I don't need to memorise a deck of cards, but what would the applications be in everyday life? How do you use this memory in everyday life? Well, as I said, there are two things. Obviously, it's 
there are practical benefits like remembering names and faces, telephone numbers, that sort of thing, but also for students for learning languages, vocab, uh, dates, the periodic table. But if you think about it, memory is everything. With, without it, you'd be lost. Your life would be a chaos. So it's good to have an efficient memory, to have things in your head. Uh, another question which hasn't, people ask uh, is, you know, can you fill up your head? And uh, as I was saying earlier, actually, uh, as I memorize more information, I seem to create more storage space. Um, so it's a very good exercise for the brain. And I, I recommend it thoroughly. <laughs> Dominic, thank you very okay. much. Really fascinating. <laughs>